Hello podcast legends, welcome back. Episode seven, we are racking them up now. We're flying and this one's a beauty. She's a beauty. It's Rebecca, the runner, as I call her. She's sitting with me today, having just completed a half marathon, set a PB for herself, but she's here for two reasons and that isn't one of them. Number one, she's just a lovely positive person who has turned herself from a couch potato, in her own words, doing no exercise since school. Within a year, she's completed over 20 events, including the half marathon in that morning, but also a full marathon. It is incredible. My second reason for getting her in was so that I can point back to this podcast or video or article, wherever you're consuming this, and point to it at any point. Any of you say to me, Frank, I can't do that. This woman proves that you absolutely can. She made a snap decision one day, her decision to book a 10K run out of nowhere. She was sitting on the couch, eating pizza, watching Netflix, I think, and then she decided to book a 10K run. She had to do it. Within eight weeks, she did it. The rest is history. Rebecca proves you can do it. I want you today to come away and know that you can too. So I hope this podcast is useful. As always, comment, let us know what you thought. Hope it helps. Can I just in my head picture the day before your event? Yeah. How long could you run in one go? Because I assume over this 10K you were yeah. going run, walk, run, it walk. It was run, walk, yeah. Like roughly. Um, I'd never, I hadn't really tried to see, okay, how far can I go before I can't go anymore? But usually it was only about a kilometre. I didn't, didn't tend so to you, run much more than that in one go. Is that how you did it? Would you run as far as you could, then walk? And then I'd or walk until I felt like I could go. I had no plan. I there see. was no plan in my yeah. head. <laughs> I didn't work like that. Um, I like that though. For a bit, what, yeah. That's what I tell people to do when they start. Yeah. Like, just see how far do you it go. On walk, feel. That, run again. Yeah, definitely. Like, like you said, I think that's great. You yeah. just went, oh, I've got to do 10K today. Yeah. Like, Somehow, <laughs> I'm getting get to the bus, end. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm crawling, I'm doing it. Yeah, so... I, I had a friend who had signed up to it as well, um, and we, she, she'd already sort of run half marathons, so she was better than me, but, oh, better, I don't know, that's not really the right word, but she was definitely more experienced. Um, but we ran together for the first, like, 2K, at which point I was like, oh, my goodness, I just ran 2K without stopping? I was like, oh, you, So this is race day? This you, is race day, You yeah, just yeah. ended up 2K, I was like, like, I've done 2K, I? oh, my gosh. Then I was, and then I was like, you go, right? And then I had a little sort of walking break. And I think I probably did that the whole way. I sort of ran one and a half to 2K, walked half a kilometer the whole way round. Um, but I, I really surprised myself that day. because I was like, I can run better than I thought I could. And it wasn't until I was in a situation where I was so terrified that there's like so much adrenaline pumping um, that I just kind of went and I was doing it. And I was right at the back. You know, I wasn't expecting to win it. <laughs> that's not, that's yeah. not my ambition. But did you remember when you're at the start of the race? Yeah. As people who haven't done events maybe don't know. Yeah. Were you positioning yourself with people you felt maybe more your ability? Definitely. Because you've got the fast right the cats, back. haven't you? That yeah, 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 Just yeah. get them out. Go, they oh, go. Yeah. I, I sort of hung as far to the back as I could because I was, I remember walking to the start being like, what am I doing? I'm not a runner. Why am I here? Like, I, I don't run. I do my own thing. And I don't, I, I was like, I don't look like a runner. I'm not really dressed like a runner. I was like wearing bright purple leggings. I was like, hey, like <laughs> everyone's going to look at me and think, what, why are you here? But no one did. And actually, yeah, people were really fast. They always are. But there were people that were my pace as well. Um, there were people that were slower than I ran. And th again, there always are most of the time. Sometimes there's not, but you kind of get used to that and that's fine. Um, but I was, I was terrified. I was so, so scared. And I just, I stood right at the back of this like gaggle of people for the start line. And then I, I kind of had in my head, I didn't want to get carried away. And I didn't want to push myself too far to the extent that I was like, and now I can't finish because I've gone too far from like too fast for myself. So I took it relatively steady, but steady enough that actually I was like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm going. This is this is happening. 
Um, you got to 2K. Yeah, I ran run the whole, off. like 2K. I was like, wow. You're on your own. You're not at the yeah. back. You're not no, at the back. No, no. Well, You're I mean, walking, I was pretty close to the back. Soaking it up. Yeah, and, and there were, like, there were some people there. Like, it definitely wasn't a massive, crowded kind of race where people are cheering you the whole way. But I didn't mind that because I was like, right, head down. I'm just going to stick at it and I'm not stopping until I cross the finish line. And then before I knew it, I'd done 5K and I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is all right. And I think um, that first race, I did the 5K in 36 minutes. And I was like, that I'd never run that fast before. I was always like teetering on sort of 40, 42 minutes for a 5K. And I was like, whoa, how am I doing this? I have no idea, but I'm gonna keep going. And I'm just gonna, you know, trundle onwards. Um, the buzz of the day. Yeah, and yeah. Are you getting this on a watch, by the way? You know your times. I didn't have a watch at that point. It was a, a lapped course. You could see the clock when you went past the start. So you had to go past the start twice. So at the 5K point, you saw the clock. So I was like, okay, I know where I'm at. This I'm doing is, all right This isn't here. so bad. There's still people here, <laughs> more importantly. Because I remember saying, um, my partner came with me and he watched. And <laughs> I was like, if everyone starts backing up, will you tell them I'm still out there? <laughs> I had no idea what was going to happen. I, I was convinced they were going to be like putting the finish line away. But, oh, sorry. As <laughs> so I kind of like half and half down. Crawl over the line. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared that that would happen. It didn't. But it they, didn't. They you were made still it. there, yeah. So what was your finishing time that <laughs> it one? It was one hour, 14 minutes and 44 seconds. Your fastest ever 10K? It was. At that point, yeah. yeah. And, and I was what did it so feel like? surprised. It, it felt like, A, I'd run a marathon because I was knackered. It was so far to me at, the point, at that point. Um, but I was, I'd just like, blown my expectations of myself out of the water, basically. I didn't, I didn't think I would ever even like, enter something like that, let alone finish it. And then after that, I was like, I, I need to do more. That was, the whole experience was just so good that I was like, I need to keep going. So after that 10K... I started 2018 thinking, okay, maybe I'll do an event a month, whether it was 5K, 10K, half marathon, I don't know, but I'm going to try and challenge myself to do 12 events. But I didn't do anything in January. I didn't do a race or anything. And I was like, well, this isn't going well. <laughs> I was still running, just about. Um, and then I didn't, I think I signed up to a 10K in February and I was like, well, I've done one before, so I can probably do it again. And it, I did, and it was okay. But at that point, I was like, I'm going to try and push myself further. I'm not the sort of person that will just repeat the same thing over and over again and be satisfied with it. I wanted to go further, so I signed up to a half marathon, which was, my first one was a Hackney half, which was in May, which, again, terrifying. Had no idea how I was going to go that far. But I just kept at it, and I, I told myself that I wasn't bothered how long it took me. I wasn't bothered about pace. I didn't try and run fast. I didn't try and run faster than I had. Had no intention of running any faster than that 10K that I did in December, but just slowly kind of trained by adding a little bit of distance on it's basically a mile a week added on i but, love that by the way because I, yeah. I i think sometimes we <clears throat> we get too into how fast or what time Definitely. you run but actually running is an enjoying enjoyable activity mm. it's rewarding because you've finished whatever it is mm -hmm. and at, some people i have have felt a difference from not timing at all. Like yeah. you said, no watch. Yeah. And then... Well, I do have a watch now. I've got it on. <laughs> yeah. um, but and now I got, you're yeah. probably you're more experienced as a runner. Yeah. But I think a good message for anyone getting into mm -hmm. running is you don't have to track your time. And actually, it can mm -hmm. be a positive to yeah. just oh, go yeah. and feel and yeah, and pick a I think pick a destination and run to definitely. it. Definitely, there's so much pressure on people to be like, well, you're too slow. But I don't think there's such a thing as too slow. I think like, I mean, obviously races have cut off times for, for safety reasons and usually because roads have to reopen or, you know, you, they need to actually pack the finish line away. But that, that cut off time is usually pretty generous and I've never been asked to stop because I'm that, and I am a slow runner. I'm usually at the back of most races, but I like it there. Uh, like people are nice back there. No one's like elbowing you out of the way because they're trying to get a PB or whatever. Um, and yeah, there's no, you don't have to put that pressure on yourself. And I think a lot of people give up with running because they think, well, I've not got any faster. So what am I doing? So for me, I was like, I don't want to fall into that trap. I kind of know maybe one day I will get faster. I don't like anticipate that I'm going to break any world records at any point. I just enjoy sort of challenging myself with new distances and stuff.
Run. You've done it. Yeah. So the benefits of running, yeah. would you say, <clears throat> go physical first, but we know I've read your blog, so we know it's more than just physical, but physical yeah. benefits there since are, you yeah. started? Yeah, definitely. I, I can walk upstairs now without getting out of breath. Like I'll go up the escalators and on the tubes instead of standing there. Like, I, and I can that do one that on the now. side of your briefcase, yeah. banging people And you save time. Yes. It's great. <laughs> and actually, I just... I feel better in myself, like I sleep better, can think more clearly and yeah, there's just, there's so many kind of physical benefits. And your mental health benefits, you've spoken oh about God, that. Yeah. So yeah, okay. but it's really helpful. Um, so in, I still, so I suffer from like long term mild depression um, and generalised anxiety disorder. So essentially it just means that like silly things make me anxious and they're things that most people don't think about. and. The depression side of things, it never tends to get too bad, but sometimes it's enough that it's like, I don't want to leave the house or all I want to do is like watch TV or whatever, which is why I was like the best couch potato ever before I started running. Um, and it just means that stuff's kind of cloudy sometimes and it's difficult to kind of see straight and think in ways that most people, you know, can easily make a decision and I can't, things like that. Um, so yeah, running just really, really helped me. Like, it wasn't instant. I wasn't like one run and I was like, wow. <laughs> but you know, over time, I kind of started needing to run in the end. It was like, if I don't run in a long time, and that a long time for me is now sort of four days, when before I was like, I could easily go three weeks without even thinking about wanting to do any exercise. Um, if I don't, then I, I really do notice like a change in like my thought pattern and I'll be more anxious in general. I won't sleep as well, things like that. So it has helped me massively. But then, the, and there's also the element of like, I'm actually achieving like things I didn't think I'd be able to achieve, which it, that does wonders for anyone, like regardless of mental health or anything like that. It, you, you just kind of like, I can do stuff that I didn't know that I could. And what else can I do if I can do this? Then I could probably mm. do anything. You know, maybe one day I'll like do a triathlon. Who knows? <laughs> You're just like, I'm going to start swimming. <laughs> just, I'll do anything. Well, it's so, it's yeah. not any more random than the day you said about <laughs> booking that first run, is it? Well, exactly. It's not. And I do, I, I kind of like to do that because I don't ever want to stagnate. I kind of want to always challenge myself um, because it is all too easy for me to just sort of be repetitive and be in cycles and just not step out of my comfort zone and I kind of now I've had that taste of stepping outside of my comfort zone I kind of want to do it more and more and I, I mean for me running is just the best way to do that I know you said it was just for you or it's mm -hmm. I know it's born from within you and that's something I mm -hmm. love and encourage for everybody mm -hmm. start with you yeah you are helping more than you now I'm sure you're aware of it yeah because you have a public profile that mm -hmm. you're putting out you share your training mm -hmm. your today's pbs mm -hmm. You'd write, you've written a blog or you want to maybe do some more of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do, you, how do you feel about that? And then if those people are listening to you, what, what mm. could you say to them? Like the couch people, yeah. you. Yeah, me. Because you ago, do inspire those people. And I, yeah. yeah. I, think, I, I think people like following what I post because I'm really honest about all of it you know if it's hard I'm honest about it if it was good I'm honest about it and I think people quite like that I don't put any pressure on speed um, or how long it takes to run a certain distance because um, I, I get a lot of messages and comments about people being like I want to run this race but I think I'm too slow do you think I can do it and I'm just like yeah of course you can like sign up right now like you absolutely can and for me that biggest, like the biggest piece of advice I could ever give is just sign up to something because it doesn't matter what it is, if it's a 5K, if it's a 10K, if it's a half marathon, like whatever, sign up to something because there's like a whole community out there that I had no idea existed and it's, everyone is so supportive. No one is judging anyone else. No one's out there like, ha, huh, you're too slow. Like that doesn't happen. Um, but so many people get really disheartened when they're not improving pace wise or whatever or they're still struggling to run for two minutes or you know that sort of thing um and I think people like that I'm really honest about the fact that like actually yeah I ran a marathon but I did it by running two and a half miles and then walking then running two and a half miles and then walking and everyone's like what you can do that it's like yeah of course you can like you don't need to be able to run that you know solid distance to be a runner like I still ran it and 
I, I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, I can run 2.5 miles. Like, yeah, of course you can. Then just, just do that a few times how, in a row. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just 10 times <laughs> and a bit more. Um, but yeah, I think I, I'm very much a firm believer that anyone can do anything if they really, really want to. Um, but you do have to want to because it does take a lot. Um, but if you want it, go for it. That's, I don't see why not. It's just really, it's simple. And I like that. Yeah. yeah. And you, could, you get so much more out of it that you didn't, like, I didn't know any, that I was going to achieve these things or, you know, have all of these benefits. But you do and it happens and it's really nice. <laughs> and yeah, I just encourage anyone to run. Regardless. Do it for yourself. Yeah. See and or f- look at the achievements you could achieve, mm. and then find good people, positive yeah. people. Look for them. Positive to people, definitely. Oh, yeah. you. I would encourage you. That's why you're here because yeah. I'm encouraging you as your vibe. We see. Just pick the Weybridge 10K because that's where we met. Yeah. If I was there and I'd never seen it and I just walked past it. Yeah. I'd probably see some weird bloke in blue dancing about and think, I ain't going there again. <laughs> First, <laughs> get past that, right? And there was a bear as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, get yeah. past that. You always are drawn to, and it's the same in the gyms, mm. the best or the fastest or the dudes at the front or the, oh, yeah. whoever's at the front, mm-hmm. and you think, I can't be that. But I know, and you know, yeah. from being at these places, a 5K, a 10K, even marathons, there are mm. so many different people. Mm maybe hanging around the back, as you called it, yeah. <laughs> that are normal and there for their yeah. own reasons, man. And yeah, and it it's, is it's there. really You've inspiring. Got to find them. Yeah. There's a sort of cliched saying in the running community, it's like, find your tribe. But it's true, yeah. you do find, you do, that happens, and you do sort of, if you go to like races regularly or whatever, you'll start to see the same kind of people. And I've like, I've made friends through it. I've met strangers that I'll never meet, bef- like meet again, but we've, you know, chatted for two hours while we were running around. At the Weybridge 10K, actually, I met a lady and we ended up running together. And she was running, I think she was doing 13 10Ks to raise money for Alzheimer's Society, I think. And I, I donated to her because she ran with me and like, you just, and I'll probably never see her again, but it's like, it's a really nice kind of, atmosphere it's different to the people that are really pushing themselves at the front but everyone's got a story and actually the the achievements for the backpackers and that Mm. community i feel are huge oh yeah compared to the guys that are fast and they're going to all the events and all they're they're fine tuning their times it's a totally different ball game it's it's so different but it doesn't mean that they're any less of a runner than someone at the back you know um it's a it's just a different approach to the whole thing and you know, I think running a marathon in six hours is equally as hard as running a marathon in three hours. It's just different. It's so different and you can't compare. And I think so many people get disheartened because they're like, well, that person can do it. You know, you can run a 10K in 45 minutes and I am still running one hour 10 or whatever. And it's like, well, that's fine. You, you, you ran a 10K. <laughs> like, great. High five, mate. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I, th- I do think that there's not enough people that give themselves that credit when they do deserve it. Because whether you ran it, you know, in two hours or whether you ran it in 35 minutes, you did it. And it's amazing. And I really like supporting like, everyone of all speeds and all abilities. So, so yeah. tactical advice for mm. you sitting on your couch yeah. in... Let me say August 2017. Yeah. You haven't decided to book anything yet. No. If you're looking at yourself, I'm you. I can't even imagine doing I'm that. I'm you, August 2017. I'm so happy on my chair. <laughs> just loving life. I haven't Probably run a like day. Binge watching I something don't on exercise. Netflix. I'm just loving my life right now. <laughs> Vegan pizza on the yeah. side. Yeah. What are you going to say to me about getting up and doing something? with running, let's go running, because that's mm. obviously the theme of today. What are you going to say to me? Tactical advice. I would say starting is the hardest part, but once you've done that, just keep going, stick at it. Because once you've got over that initial fear or whatever it is that's stopping you, there's so much out there to experience and learn, regardless of like, how you experience it or you know whether you have a rubbish run or whether you have a rubbish race or whether you're still slow or whatever you you did it you started and it's that first step that is absolutely the hardest 
even like even in couch to 5k that first minute oh my god it it hurts it, it hurts more than a marathon but it's just a different pain and actually the benefits far outweigh any imagined sort of worry that you might have like people might look at you and laugh they won't people might think that you're not a runner and you're you shouldn't be there they won't people might you know pack up the finish line and go home before you get there they won't none of that stuff will happen and actually it's so worth it just start the starting point is so important and then regardless of whatever finish line you cross you started and you can be proud of it and there you go i couldn't have said that last part any better if i tried be proud whatever it is you've done push yourself out of your comfort zone be proud of it you've achieved it rebecca will continue to achieve more and more medals and hopefully challenge herself beyond what she discussed here. I hope you feel ready to do that. Thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the podcast so you can get these weekly um, interviews as they come. Also follow Rebecca across social media and we'd love to hear your comments if you can in and around this podcast, whether you're listening, watching or reading the article. Love to hear that. And we'll see you again next time for more podcast fun. Have fun. You've been listening to the Fit with Frank podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now so you can be first to be notified of new episodes released every week where Frank dives deep, chats with some of the finest guests across the health and fitness industry alongside inspiring stories from people just like you so we can inspire and hopefully empower you to lead a happier, healthier lifestyle. Have fun.